A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Wheeland Presley Funeral Home and Crematory has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Wheeland Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds and are proud supporters of WQPT. New leadership for one of the city's largest school districts. And Bix lives, even surviving the flood of 2019 in the cities. Saving the history of Bix, with the race and the jazz fest at hand, we look at what it took to save the legendary musician's keepsakes from being lost to the flood of 2019. But first, a new leader for Rock Island Milan Schools. Dr. Reginald Lawrence is a man with almost 30 years experience in the Milwaukee school system. He started as a teacher, worked his way into administration, and was one of the regional superintendents in Wisconsin's biggest city. So, what's his plan for Rocky? Joining us is Rock Island Milan School Superintendent Dr. Reginald Lawrence. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me, Jim. What makes Rock Island Milan appealing? Um, you know, the one, the diversity in the school district. Very much um, so. As I was looking for superintendent positions, uh, to see that 40% uh, white, 30% black, African American, 16% Hispanic, 6% Asian, uh, that was just so appealing to me because that's what America looks like. It is very diverse, and so this was the place for me. Well, I would think the key also, if you think about it, is, is, is that you really did start inside the classroom. How important is that to you? Is that is that, that you have that link mm -hmm. as a former teacher? Right, well, that experience means a lot. Uh, it means, you know, as you learn to uh, become an educator, you build relationships with students, you know a little bit behind the academic and instructional pieces that are needed. Uh, when you carry that on through the leadership role where I'm at now, um, you know, all the, uh, the educators and parents, they realize that you know a little bit about what you're talking about because exactly. of that experience. And as regional, one of the regional superintendents in Milwaukee, what does that mean? Because when you think of a superintendent, you think it's the whole district. Sure. Well, uh, in Milwaukee Public Schools with 160 schools, it's pretty tough for one superintendent to, to uh, work with all those schools. So a regional superintendent is quite like a small uh, superintendent of your own district. I had about 25 schools this last year, 35 the previous year, but uh, I did everything that a superintendent would do outside of uh, make all the financial decisions. <laughs> so I ran the schools and then I reported to the superintendent. And, and those financial decisions are not inconsequential, of course, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but yes. what, what do you think that you're going to bring from Milwaukee in particular, because it's such a large mm -hmm. school district, and as you said, you like Rock Island because it is so diverse and it's a representative of, of the American public. Well, one of the things that I hope to bring is um, the partnership piece. You know, we believed a lot in collective impact. Large district, lots of partnerships working with local organizations. We're here in a smaller place where there are some partnerships built, but I just know that uh, collective impact and work with your community and, and uh, faith-based organizations, schools can't do it alone. And so when you have the impact of a community working with you, um, it means that success is definitely going to be something that you get to. And there is some of that with Rock Island and the other Quad City School Districts. Yes. United Way very active in trying to improve uh, uh, school retention rates. Uh, uh, reading rates I know is a huge thing for the Rock Island District that I want to talk about as well. Sure. You have the Martin Luther King Center. You've got a number of different mm -hmm. uh, assets here in Rock Island. Yes. Uh, how do you want to grow that? I mean, Because uh, you know of them mm -hmm. and I'm sure that you know they're linked to the Rock Island Milan School District. How do you hope to grow that? Well, I mean, one, I think when I reach out to parents, you know, sometimes we have all these resources that are right under our noses, right under our fingertips, yet we don't try to take advantage of them. And so a big piece will be to, um, one, just make sure that we know of all the resources and, and partnerships that are available. And then two, it'll, it will really be to get our parents and community both in the schools and into those places because the more that we can build relationships, um, once people become comfortable and knowledgeable of, of places and resources, uh, they really do feel more open to use them. So that'll be a big part of where I start. Well, I want to talk about some other resources, and that, of course, is money. You are in Milwaukee. You don't live in a bubble. You know of the state of <laughs> Illinois. You That's know right. what Illinois legislature was like over the last uh, four years, mm -hmm. particularly towards education. Um, <laughs> when you were coming to Rock Island, was that one of those things that gave you pause? It's like, well, wait a second. This is the state of Illinois. I've heard these things, and school funding uh, commitments may not be as good as I wish they would be. Um, you know, there was a little bit of anxiety, Trepidation. but then absolutely. Uh, but when you have the evidence-based funding uh, measure that passed, 
and to hear um, you know, the 1% sales tax and how those additional resources would be coming to sort of level the playing field. Um, I got a little bit excited then because this is a small district, um, hoping that uh, we would fall in that tier one level to receive right. funds. And uh, when that came, uh, that came to fruition in last year and this year and to see how the resources help to take care of facilities, um, got rid of that, that trepidation. Well, I, I, I want to stay with this because I find that interesting is that for an outsider educator, you know, outside of Illinois, I mean, that does, the state has a reputation right now. Is it critically important that, that the legislature does recognize K through 12 as well as secondary education is something that people outside the state limits are looking at? Well, um, we, we are in the education field, we all look at each other because we realize how important education is and we know that um, it's not just brick and mortar, it's not just the instructional piece, but we know when it comes to the personnel and human resources needed, um, dollars and funds are important. And so our children are our future. And uh, you know, if we don't have the funding that's gonna make it uh, possible for them to receive what they need, uh, it leads to some of what we see you know, as our, as our uh, children become parents and, and they don't have all the resources that they need to run their families effectively. Yeah, because the key is no matter how you want your children to succeed, whether it's educationally right. or in life in so many mm -hmm. different ways. When you look at the Rock Island School District before you came here, did you see one of the biggest challenges that you wanted to address first? Uh, absolutely. You know, um, as, an, as an educator, you're always thinking about academic achievement. And I think of high school graduation and how important it is. And to come to a school district that has one high school, I'm coming from one where we had over 28 high schools. Mm -hmm. So I could see the impact of, uh, you know, dropout rates in a number of schools. But to see one school um, and, and uh, want to take on that challenge of graduating more students, um, to me, that just became a goal of mine. The high school graduation piece is going to be really huge here because a number of the remaining families, uh, teachers in our current Rocky High School, uh, graduates, they all came from here and they stay and remain in the right. community. So that piece is huge. And, and you say that means a lot then, right? Oh, absolutely. That's Graduation huge. rate within four years right now is 78% for the Rock Island Milan School District. Your yes. target, at least uh, what they illustrated as the target uh, in the uh, plan for uh, Rock Island was 86%. Yes. Which is actually your, your real target for 2020 was 100%, of course, because you want to <laughs> aim for everybody. That's right. 78%, what does that speak to you? Well, what it speaks to me is uh, we're going to have to do uh, and, and put forth increased efforts uh, to look at our students that are falling through the cracks. You know, when they look at uh, uh, how we predict four year graduation rates, uh, if students are staying on track with the number of credits that they take each year and each semester, it just means that we really need to take a closer look um, using our school counselors, using our administrators to uh, uh, take a look at how our students and why our students are falling behind on the number of credits that they take each year. Um, if we can some way uh, impact them by using summer school or using other opportunities to make up those credits that put them behind, uh, we can increase that four-year rate. But thank goodness that uh, when you look at the five-year rate, you see an increase. And when you look at the six-year rate of us getting up to 82%, it means that there's definitely some room for improvement. Well, and I, I ask, I know this is blasphemy to say this to you, but I mean, there are people that don't believe in education is necessarily all that important. They can get into a trade or they can get into some, even though there's so many studies that say if you at least have a high school degree, your earning potential is so much more. But mm -hmm. there's certain people you know that you're not going to reach. That 100% is kind That's of pie in the sky, of course, because not everyone is a cookie cutter that can survive, survive high school. But so why is it important to reach perhaps those people who aren't graduating from high school? Well, again, our goal, um, graduating from high school, our goal is to prepare our students for the future. Yeah. So that means the college and the career uh, readiness component. Um, we have to realize that all of our children aren't gonna go to college. You know, the conversation has always been as, in, uh, as an educator or as an adult, we would always tell our students, um, here's what you can become. Well, now we need to flip that rhetoric a little bit and ask them, what would you like to become? And let me help you get there. And if it means that uh, they want to go into business themselves or they want to go to a two year school or get a nursing certification uh, or even go to the military, it is our job as adults in the school system to uh, help make that pathway for them as easy as possible so that they can have success. Let's be honest, that is a sea change from 20, 25, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. is, is to make the school adaptive to the student rather than the student adaptive to the school. Absolutely. We now call it personalized learning. Um, <laughs> there has to be a title for <laughs> <Absolutely>. it, doesn't it? <laughs> first day of school is coming up on Friday, yes. uh, the first uh, Friday of August. I mean, is it an exciting time for you when, when you start the new school year? It's really exciting for me because my last school district 
students didn't come back until after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. So to be starting August 2nd, uh, I can't wait to see those students. I had a chance to look at some of them uh, during registration and everyone is ready to get back to see their friends, to see their new grade levels, um, to find out what others were doing uh, for the summer. So Friday is gonna be a huge day as we kick off the 19, uh, 1920 school year. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and the other thing is that, I mean, like you were saying, you, you had brought up the sales tax, which was mm -hmm. uh, approved after a number of tries for Rock Island County, which is being used to help infrastructure and, and to rebuild schools. You've seen all, you mentioned you have one high school, but you've seen all of the uh, facilities that you have. Are there great needs there? Because there has been a great deal of change over the last two, three years, and of course, more would be coming. Yes, I mean, you know, uh, with facilities and maintenance, buildings get old, yeah. brick and mortar gets old, whether it's tuck pointing or what have you, uh, roofing work. So I've seen the change, um, but that the, the funds that, that we've received have helped us not only um, take care of needed facility, facility needs, but it's, it's helped us to um, take care of some, some projects that are upgrades. For instance, with secured entryways at a number of our schools, uh, we've got a new uh, uh, tennis court and some tuck pointing going on at Rocky High School. Uh, fire alarm systems in some of our buildings so the funds uh, they are definitely needed and well very well welcome well, and I want to get to one other area while we still have some time, and that is back in, uh, it's only been two years ago that Rock Island Milan really started to initiate the uh, This House Rocks program. Uh, it was updated in February, where you guys have actual goals. Uh, among the biggest is that all students must meet growth target in English, language arts, and math. The real core yes. curriculum. Is that still something that that you totally embrace? Is that something that you're hoping to push forward? Absolutely. Uh, again, we want our children to be prepared for the future. And so um, meeting all your growth targets along the way means that uh, you have a better chance of, of succeeding in life. Um, those goals will remain the same because uh, as we continue to use different assessment tools, different curriculums that come out are still, our, our goal is to make sure that uh, we use it to prepare our children so that they can read, write, do math, and live a productive life. The assessment is such a huge deal, though, because in so many ways, sometimes mm -hmm. people were, 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 I'm not saying Rock Island Milan, sure. but were manipulating curriculum in order to pass the test, mm -hmm. it, it, because that was where it was being assessed. I mean, we've learned that that is a problem and have moved forward from that. So what is the assessment then for Rock Island Milan? Well, I mean, our assessment is we have to still go along with the state. And I know for the state uh, report card, the uh, Illinois uh, Assessment for Readiness, the IAR, we, you have to still abide by the state rules. But, um, you know, we, we continue to use our, our universal screener, which is the MAP test for NWEA. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those uh, assessments that continues to progress, uh, getting a little bit tougher every time students take it to continue to move them forward. Um, the assessment piece is, is something that we can't change but it means that uh, we have to continue to teach to the standards. And that's the difference. When you're trying to pick curriculum that uh, teaches to the test, uh, tests change every year and, <laughs> or every other year. So teaching to the standards is really gonna be the important piece for us. Uh, core, all those core areas that you talked about earlier. As you said, you're so excited about the beginning of the yes. school year, not only meeting the kids, but you're gonna be meeting the parents. You have mm -hmm. staff of teachers and, and everyone else that, that works in the school district. Yes. How do you plan on doing outreach this year on your first year? I mean, do you have plans on, on what you wanna do to get more acquainted with the community? Well, as I say, I'm, I'm on the Reggie Lawrence listening tour. <laughs> that means that for my first 100 days, um, it means getting out to the community. It means having some listening sessions in all different parts of, uh, of Rock Island uh, and Milan. Uh, it means going to events. I had a chance to go to, uh, I think you all call it red, white, and boom. I call it red, white, and wet because it was raining a lot <laughs> it that was, day. Yeah. Uh, I'll be a part of the Labor Day, the upcoming Labor Day parade. Um, I just recently had a meet and greet at the uh, Martin Luther King Center, Martin Luther King Jr. Center this past Saturday. Uh, we'll be at Ready to Rock on Friday, on Sunday, Sunday, uh, July 28th with the mayor and uh, members of the community. Uh, so, you know, my way of, of getting to know families and parents is to be a part of the community, uh, to, to be uh, vocal, to be active, to be engaged, and to be visible. Dr. Reginald Lawrence, the uh, new superintendent of Rock Island Milan School District, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate sure. it. The mad dash to make sure the legacy of Bix is not destroyed. But first, Laura Adams goes out and about with some great ideas for you, your family, and your friends. This is Out and About for July 22nd to 28th. Participate or watch as over 20,000 competitors run the annual Quad City Times Big 7 Run Walk, July 27th, starting at 8 a.m. 
and celebrate lots of festival fun in downtown Davenport at their annual street festival, held in conjunction with the Big 7 Run July 26th and 27th from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Enjoy live music from DJ Pachanga and children's activities from Nahant Marsh at Mercado on 5th on July 26th. Celebrate National Moth Week at Nahant Marsh on the 27th at 8 p.m., while Jester Puppets bring imagination and laughter together in educational shows for children on the 22nd at the Rock Island Public Library starting at 2. Enjoy a summer concert at Faze Field in Bettendorf on the 27th featuring Minus Six. Or come to Geneseo Park for 10 local Christian bands the 28th starting at 3 p.m. Bruner Theatre on the campus of Augustana College presents Dames at Sea, the long-running song and dance off-Broadway hit. Opening the 26th at Circa 21 is Sheer Madness, a madcap comedy where the audience picks who done it. And there's a one-time only performance of An Evening with C.S. Lewis at Emanuel Reformed Church in Morrison on the 28th. For more information, visit wqpt.org. Thank you, Laura. Mo Carter has been described as a freight train of energy with a bold, soulful voice. She's part of the group The Veelies, but joined us with one of her own solo works. Here's Mo Carter at the Black Box Theater in Moline with an original hardware store man.
Damport musician Mo Carter at the Black Box Theater with Hardware Store Man. Well, when the temporary flood wall holding back the Mississippi River gave out in late April, businesses scrambled to save what they could. Much of it, of course, was replaceable, but in the basement of the River Music Experience were items that couldn't be replaced. They are the chronicle of the life of jazz legend Bix Beiderbecke. Saved they were. And now they're back on display just as the city celebrates the life of Bix. And joining us is the president of the Bix Beiderbecke Museum and Archives, Howard Brerin. Howard, good. thank you so much for joining us. Good to have you here. Glad to be here. This is only two years old, right. the, the museum. Um, right. But it's like, why didn't we think of this before? But you have a great home that people can see in the basement of the RME. Right. And, and furthermore, it's free. The price is perfect. <laughs> right. Take me back to that flood. You knew the water was rising. The temporary HESCO barriers were holding it back through much of, what, uh, uh, late February, but mostly March and April. Then all of a sudden, you heard about the breach. The breach happened and the water came and punctured a part of the wall, lower part of the wall at the lower level of the RME, and water started pouring in. We were able to contain it with barriers for a period of time, and, and within the hour we had a technician down there to plug the wall. Now you had, or, so it was just one? Well, a couple, healthy, okay. a couple about the size of a half dollar. Mm -hmm and they plugged it up with a material that w when it hits water, it expands. And that did the trick, but there was water all over the place. And in the meantime, we, in anticipation that the water might rise, we raised the Bix piano, which was already on a small stage, sure. and raised it on cinder blocks. Well, take me back a little before the, uh, the actual breach occurred. I mean, were you already prepared? Did you move as much as you could? Yes, we, we, we've, we removed everything. We had a team of people. I mean, it came out of the woodwork, volunteers taking every item in the Bix Museum up to the second floor in a secure area. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let's be honest, I mean, you, you, his coronet's there. Um, you, you have a contribution of uh, some of his personal items uh, that included uh, his, his, his well-known gold vest and, right. and, and the trunk that he traveled in, which, oh, yes. which are not inconsequential for, for you know, lovers of Bix Beiderbecke. Not at all. All that material was brought up to the second floor where it was in a secure place. And um, now we brought it all back down. It's back and even better than before. We redid the floor of the museum and so uh, we're open for business uh, weekdays from 10 until 5. Again, this is in a river music experience at the corner of 2nd and Main in downtown Davenport. For old people like me, the old Redstone Building, of course. That's right. Or to, for some of us, the old Peterson Harmon <laughs> Walmart fair enough, department fair store. <laughs> well done, well done. Uh, did you have to make a, a lot of uh, changes? I mean, because you have wall displays. I mean, what was the extent of the damage? What had to be replaced? Virtually nothing. That's fantastic. We were able to take down all the, wall, all the displays and bring them up to the second floor. Uh, it was a miracle that we were able to get all this done and preserve it. And it's now back in place for p visitors to uh, enjoy and experience Bix's life and music. Well, like I said, it's been two years that you're, you've been open. It's relatively new. What's, what's surprised you so far? I mean, people will latch on or notice or really fall in love with something that you might not have expected them to. Is there, is there any part of the exhibit that surprised you that people are really enjoying? What surprises us is several things, is where people are coming from. Literally, we keep a record, people sign in. People come from all over the country, virtually every state. People make a trip to Davenport to come to the Bix Museum. And more before the uh, breach in the wall, we had a gentleman come from Beijing, China. He was on a business trip uh, to the Midwest. He made a special trip, told our attendant that in Beijing, there are a core of Bix fans <laughs> that get together regularly and listen to Bix music. This really does underline the whole point of, of Bix living. He died at the age of 28, but the uh, impact that he's had on music is Lives beyond on. what you even thought. Amen. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what you hope people will do because you've got the big, you got the run coming up and you've got the Jazz Fest. I mean, people really think about Bix during these few weeks in, in uh, early August. 
Well, we're hoping that uh, BIX uh, fans and others who want to learn more about BIX come down and take in the BIX mu Museum. You can do it in, depending on whether you want to spend 20 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. And while you're there, there's BIX music playing in the background. So you can enjoy. And then we have some interactive screens that you can touch and listen to BIX music. I, I, you, this must have been a dream for you for quite some time. I, mean, my, I, I keep underlining the fact that it's only been two years, yet the Bix Jazz Festival, isn't it marking... 47. Yeah, it's marking 50 soon. Oh, no, 47. Yeah, but what I'm saying is it's, it's, yeah. it's close to, you know, the 50-year mark, and, right. and, and you're seeing, you know, it's, it's been around, and, and finally we're getting a chance. I know the Putnam Museum always had an exhibit of some sort, but now there's this permanent exhibit. Well, it took us uh, a lot. Eight or, nine, eight or nine years, 800,000, which we raised privately among Bix friends and supporters. Plus to find an appropriate home. Right, and we're debt free. Yeah. We, and we, we're looking forward to uh, building up an endowment to secure it over time. I was gonna ask, what is the next step? What are you hoping for next for the Bix Museum? Well, that's, that's a key issue. Absolutely. That we maintain it in perpetuity. And so we're encouraging big supporters to perhaps include the Bix Museum in their estate plan and, uh, and make a, a generous donation as we speak. When I talk about uh, what you are president of, it's important to underline the second part, the Bix Beiderbeck Museum and Archive President. How active is the archive? Are, are you still collecting things? Well, we are developing the archives in the uh, Davenport Public Library, just one block north mm -hmm. of the museum. And it's uh, in development right now. And we expect that in a, within two months that we're gonna announce an opening of the Bix archives, which uh, will uh, have all kinds of Bix memorabilia available for researchers and and others. M uh, musical lovers, scholars, all of that. Yes. That's a fantastic And the lower idea. level of the, of, the, of the Davenport Public Library. You're in a lot of basements now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay though, just keep them dry. Howard Brerin, the uh, president of the uh, Bix Beiderbeck uh, Memorial Museum and uh, Archives, thank you so much for joining us. Thank we you appreciate for it. And thanks for everything you do. Saving all that memorabilia is not a small task, so thank you as well. WQPT does more than provide you with thought-provoking programming. We have outreach programs that also help you and your family learn more. One of our most successful outreach efforts is called the First Book Program. Since 1995, WQPT has given out more than 300,000 free books in this nationwide initiative. It costs about $25 to support one student for one year. And you have to admit, that would be money well spent. But you can also support an entire classroom or a school. Find out the details by going to our website, wqpt.org, and search Outreach. The impact you make, simply immeasurable. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device, thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Wheelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Wheelan Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds and are proud supporters of WQPT.